Vice Chair Josh Chapman. This meeting is being recorded. Here. Director Tom Stallard. Can't hear him. Uh, Director Will Arnold. Stallard is here. Thank you. Uh, did I hear Will say yes, here? Okay. Yeah, listen. Director Angel Barajas. And UC Davis, Representative Camille Kirk. Present. Thank you. And the others who are not on the board, please identify yourself and who you're with and what you represent. Starting with Tim. Uh, I'm Tim Bush, General Manager of the Wilma Davis Clean Water Agency. Stan Gritschko, Operations Manager, uh, Woodland Davis Clean Water Agency. Dick Shanahan, Agency General Counsel. Kim McKee, Agency Treasurer. Craig Lockwood in Public Works. Great. I think oh, we have how about Lindsay. Lindsay Smith, West Coast Associate uh, Engineering Technical Support for the agency. Great. I think that's everybody. That's going to take us to uh, item number one, and that's that uh, this is a teleconference meeting is authorized by uh, that, that government code section 54953. Do we have to have a vote on this, council? Uh, yes, you do. Motion, right. Mr. Chair, to uh, approve the action. Second, Arnold. Motion by Stallard, second by Arnold. Uh, Michelle, a vote. A voice vote, please. Yes. Uh, Director Will Arnold. Aye. Director Tom Stallard. Aye. Vice Chair Josh Chapman. Aye. Chair Rich Landsberg. Aye. That takes us to item number two, approval of the agenda. Has everyone had a chance to look at the agenda? Sounds like it. So uh, we have a motion on the agenda, please. So moved. Second, second, second by Stallard. <laughs> what? I think I think Will moved it. And Will got it. <laughs> second by Josh. Is that right? That sounds great. Yep. <laughs> right, let's do, do that, Michelle. Oh, well. Chair Rich Landsberg. Aye. Vice Chair Chapman. Aye. Director Stallard. Aye. Director Arnold. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. That takes us to item number three, public comment. Have we received any public comment on an item that's that's not on the agenda? I have not received any at the agency office via phone or email. Okay. And is there anybody that's standing by on Zoom to make a public comment? None. Okay. And we'll close public comment and take us to item number four of the consent counter where we have two items which is approval of the uh, April 21 regular meeting and special meeting. Um, is there a motion on item number four, the consent calendar? Oh, wait a minute. We also have number five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now, wait a minute, I'll take that back. Let's just go item number four, the consent items. Got confused there. Uh, I'll move consent, this is Arnold. Second Moved by Arnold, second by Chapman. Michelle, please. Chair Landsberg. Aye. Vice Chair Chapman. Aye. Director Stallard. Aye. Director Arnold. Aye. Thank you. Right. Passes. Now we go to number five, which is the update by our general manager and our operations managers. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, Stan is advancing the slides for us. So we have four topics today is basically typical or typical update. Uh, water supply, like what we're doing right now in terms of supplemental water supply, an update on our capital improvements and also operations update. But one thing real quick before we move on from here, we that's not in here because it's a real quick update, but we are uh, working on, um, I guess, electrical upgrades, I guess, for this facility. Uh, working on solar, solar power, we have been uh, working with a solar consultant to try to get into what do we need to do to issue an RFP to bring somebody on board to look at getting solar power at our facilities. Um, the next step is to have an in-person meeting with them. We rescheduled it a few times. I think we're trying again next week. Um, it's just been various people having conflicts. 
Um, the other thing that's kind of interesting is we, if you recall, we did sign a contract with WAPA back in, I think two years ago now, uh, for a supplemental water, uh, supplemental electrical power starting in 2025. Uh, WAPA reached out to us last week and asked if we would meet with them to discuss what they called full load, which to me means they want to meet with us to discuss fully giving us WAPA power at our, at our water treatment plant. Which would be which would be great because it's WAPA is far less expensive than PG&E rates are. So we're actually doing that meeting July one. Uh, we'll report back to the board what comes of that, but that um, seems really promising. They actually want to come to our facilities and, and talk with us. From what it sounds like to me, anyways, is full power supply. Um, which I'm guessing would probably still be in the 2025 timeframe as our, our other contract with them already is. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Uh, this is a usual water supply outlook. This, this, you've seen this graphic before. This is the eight station index for Northern California. It's basically uh, the Sacramento River watershed. Uh, on the right, on the left hand side is uh, precipitation, cumulative precipitation in inches. Along the bottom is, is the months of the year, starting with October 1 is the beginning of the water year. The top of the shaded area is the 30 year moving average, so 1991 to year 2000. Um, the darker blue line kind of just in, in the shaded area is the current year. So this graphic is updated every day. This is what it was on Thursday, early Wednesday, I guess, um, at 41. So about 79% of average for the year, which wouldn't be too bad if that was the first year that was the case. But if you look just below, um, the last two years were much drier. Last year, I think, ended up at less than half of average. So it's the, the current draw we're in is really because it's not that this past year has been too terrible, it's just that it's the third year in a row of, of very dry water. Um, so that's kind of where we're at um, on a regional basis. Uh, next slide, please. This is this is look like Shasta. Again, this is graphics that you're used to seeing. Uh, on the left-hand side is uh, storage in Lake Shasta. It has a total capacity of just over 4.5 million acre feet. And then on the bottom again is the months. Uh, same thing is true, top the shaded area is the average. And the darker blue line uh, kind of going across the screen is, is the current day, is the daily storage amount. Um, as of the Wednesday last week, the storage amount was 1.8 million acre feet of water. As you can kind of see tracing it from October through now, you know, we didn't really get much precipitation until December. December into January a little bit, there was some more storage in Lake Shasta. Um, but the three months of dry weather this winter really ended the ability for Shasta to gain water. Um, just for a sense as to why our CVP water right has been cut by 82% this year, um, that water right comes out of Lake Shasta. It is a Sacramento River Settlement Contractor water right. Uh, the aggregate of all the Sac River Settlement Contractor water rights is around 2.2 million acre feet. So with, with 1.8 million total storage now, and it's kind of been there most of the winter, um, there, there was just simply not enough water to give us even our 75% allocation. And so that's, this graphic really shows it very clearly why, why the reclamation had to cut our water rights as drastically as they did. They do have a, a goal of trying to have 1 million acre feet in Shasta at, on October 1. And that's just to allow some store, carryover storage going into winter. And in case it's another dry winter, uh, they have at least some water available. But it's kind of a really good, um, uh, good graphic to show just how bad water supplies this year. Um, next slide, please. Uh, Oroville is doing a little bit better. Um, the, same, the same premise is true. Storage is on the left, months on the bottom. Uh, top of the shaded area is, is the average. Um, and the dark blue is the daily Oroville storage. It did come up a bit in, in, from the December storms as the snow melted a bit. And then April and May, we actually did get um, some storage into Oroville. A little bit got into Shasta, but more got into Oroville. So we, there were some actual storms in the mountains a um, couple of times in April and then again in May, that really did help uh, the water water situation out for us quite a bit. Um, but overall today is about half, it's about half full, uh, quite a bit below average for this time of year. And that will be expected, I think. They're gonna draw heavily down on Orville this summer just to kind of make the system work entirely. Uh, any, any questions so far on, on regional water storage? Okay, uh, next slide, please. So what it looks for us. So this year, uh, the Chum 91 curtailment started on June 3rd. This is, this is quite a bit later than what we were, we were anticipating earlier uh, this year. We thought in April that the state was telling us it was gonna start in April. Uh, a couple of storms in April pushed it back. 
Then we got a couple storms in May, which continue to push it back. Uh, the other the other big factor and why it didn't start until June, um, in addition to the couple of rainstorms we had, uh, was that basically uh, irrigated crops with surface water isn't really happening this year. Uh, a lot of farmers didn't plant if they only had surface water because they couldn't be guaranteed being able to finish a crop. So uh, the lack of irrigated irrigated crops this year kind of helped keep water in the river, which also delayed the curtailment start, um, which works out really worked out really well for us. Um, as you already know, our CVP water right has been cut to 1,800 acre feet um, for the, through October 31 from a usual 10,000 acre feet. We did buy uh, the 10,000 acre feet, or sorry, 6,000 acre feet from South Sutter Water District. We did receive our TUCP on June 3rd uh, with a 13% stream flow depletion factor. And I think some of you may have heard us talk about this just earlier. Uh, it is in our contract with the South Sutter Water District to assume a 13% stream flow depletion factor. Uh, what that means is, is that um, South Sutter Water District, some of their farmers are using uh, what they call groundwater substitution. So instead of using water from the reservoir to grow crops, they sold us water. They are then using groundwater wells to water the crops. The state now is now saying that, well, some of the water that leaves the reservoir goes into the river down to us. Some of that water is actually picked up by the wells and is being used for irrigation. So there's, there's assumed loss of stream flow depletion losses in the river due to using wells. Um, our contract with South Sutter had a 13% stream depletion factor. That's what we were counting on. We got our draft permit in April and the state had put in a 25% stream flow depletion factor. Which, which for us is, was really problematic. One, uh, and one reason it was kind of a made up number. Um, the other more practical reason problem is that um, that would cost us roughly 900 acre feet of water that we would be paying for and not receiving uh, with that higher stream flow. If basically, if we have to assume that 25% of all water is lost versus 13%, that would have fallen onto the agency. Uh, in terms of numbers, it would have been around $700,000 in cost or 900 acre feet in water, depending on how you're, how you're looking at it. So um, we reached out to some other uh, groups to help us. Northern California Water Agency helped us substantially. Uh, several other water buyers and sellers also helped out. Um, it, so it was a really kind of a regional group effort um, to work with the state water board to get that change back to the 13% stream flow depletion factor. Um, we, we even had a meeting with the Bureau of Reclamation and Department of Water Resources because they also wanted 13%. So that, that worked out very well for us. Uh, could have been uh, could have been either a higher cost or less water or both for us, but uh, it worked out for 13%, at least for the time being. And uh, so it's kind of a, that's more of a real statewide issue, but we kind of got caught up in being the, the leader and arguing it, I guess, this year. Uh, mm -hmm. And we do have uh, option for 4,000 acre feet of water with South Sutter Water District for uh, for November through March timeframe. We'll start working on that very soon if we want to exercise that option or, or, or if there's another option that may be available to us. Uh, we did purchase 1,300 acre feet from Conaway Preservation Group. That water is usable through October 31. And I'll talk in the next slide really um, how we're planning using that this year. Uh, another benefit of Term 91 now starting until June is that Woodland was able to continue to store water in its aquifer storage and recovery wells uh, ultimately, Woodland stored around 835 million gallons of water this winter, which is a new record, actually. In one of the driest years ever, Woodland was able to store the most water ever. Um, but the benefit to the agency is, and its partners is that because Woodland has quite a bit of stored surface water, it gives us more flexibility for trading the water that we do have amongst all three partners. So we, so we do have a fair amount of flexibility because, because of the stored water. Uh, next slide, please. For our operational strategy this year, it, it depends a bit on which water we're using since we are operating majority on purchased water. Uh, from June 7 through September 8, uh, this, this is the flow regime that we're working with Woodlands, getting about 9.6 million gallons per day, Davis 10 and UC Davis 0.4. Uh, these flow rates have been worked out uh, with the partners over the past couple months. Uh, the reason why it's June 7, not June 3rd, is that South Sutter Water District needed to have staff on hand to change the dam operation which we were told term 91 would start June 7th and it got switched to June 3rd. So we used our C CVP water right for a few days in June. And then um, the other good thing about our permit is that we have the ability to use South Sutter water until September 15. Earlier that day was gonna be um, 
September 1. Uh, so we do have, so it works out, it's just we use a different water right in a few different days. Then uh, beginning September 8, uh, we switched to using CPG and our CVP water supply. Then the flows will drop to the partners. One will drop down to seven, Davis to 8.2 and UC Davis 0.4. We, we do have the ability to use some of the CVP or CPG water prior to September 8th when we're using the cell sutter water. However, the reverse is not true. Um, so we're, right now our plan is to use cell sutter water exclusively. When that runs out, we'll switch to the other two. But if a partner wants more water earlier, we can certainly accommodate that. It's just that we will have to then subtract it from October. Uh, and next slide, please. So the other things we're working on, we continue to work on both short and long-term water options, especially this winter. I think uh, it's quite likely that Trimlet and One will continue into November, at least as we see things in June. Um, Slice Reservoir, we are continuing to be in the running for that. Um, the, 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 the deadline for joining or not joining has been pushed back uh, several months. Um, we did have a meeting with them a few weeks ago. It's, it, it's looking more like now that there is potentially less water available than there are people looking for water. So ultimately that may not, it may not be an option for us. It, it's something that I think for us was maybe gonna be a backup option, but it looks like just the amount of water they have to allocate and the number of people looking for water, it may be, it may be hard to even get it if we really tried to. Um, next slide, please. With that, I will turn it over to Stan for capital improvements, unless there's any questions on overall water supply or our approach for this year. Yeah, hey Tim, this is Josh. Just a quick question for you. When you mentioned the delay in the term 91 curtailment and it was a combination of you know the storms that we had in February, March, and then also the combination of the farmers not using the groundwater, what percentage roughly was, is, is that curtailment due to the farmers not using it? Like, do we see that like that long-term trend is gonna stay or is it, but how are we analyzing the farmers not using that water moving forward? Is that something that we see is going to happen and that delay, you know, in the future may stay in that range of late May, early June, or is this kind of a one-off thing or we just don't know? Yeah, I think, I think it's more of a one-off thing than, than a trend. Um, when term 91 starts, it, it does depend on a lot of factors, but this year in particular, um, Bureau of Reclamation had been doing a lot of, um, uh, informational releases to us very early. We knew back in January, there was a problem with water supply this year. So a lot of farmers already knew in January, expect more than 25% cut. Got it. Um, right. They actually did it in March. So we knew, we knew prior to farmers having to make planting decisions that they were not really getting enough water this year to, to mm. plant. Yeah, okay, thank you. Cool, okay. Uh, so capital improvements. Uh, so Jacob, uh, as noted there, Jacobs is obtaining quotes. Um, we're looking to make some modifications to the uh, joint intake uh, for roof access. Uh, these are not new. These have been on the books for a while. We've just finally getting to the point where Jacobs is, is able to procure some quotes. Uh, replace and realign the screen cleaner uh, wire. That's been uh, ongoing, and, and we've been looking at that for a bit as well. Uh, RD 2035 does share in that cost, um, and as we continue to do, uh, Tim and I continue to chat with uh, my call over at RD 2035 on, on that cost sharing. Um, currently, it's 80% that they should be paying for for those common facilities. So those will, those, will, those discussions will continue. Um, uh, Jacobs is looking to um, add basically a basket. So right now, um, if we want to maintain and, and work on the bearings uh, for the screen cleaner uh, that are actually out on the side of the river side of our intake, um, it's a very, I'll say, challenging process for the team, and by team I mean Jacobs, to get down over the side, to get to those bearings, to grease them, to replace them uh, when they need to. Uh, so they're looking at actually purchasing a, a hoist or purchasing a basket that we can hook to our existing crane uh, that pulls the screeners up, the, the fish screens up, um, and um, completely on board with ocean and all regs. Uh, but this way it'll enable them to get over there, be much safer when they're working, have more, more space to be able to work on those uh, pieces of equipment when they need to. So they're looking at that. Uh, raw water flow meter we mentioned last time. Uh, we'll be looking to um, get that replaced here this summer. Um, and it's part of the budget for the repair and replacement fund. Uh, and then uh, we do still have that uh, erosion control project out at the intake uh, over by the fish refugia. 
um, to get done. Uh, RD 2035, hopefully we'll get a contractor engaged to, to get that done. And then on to operations, very familiar, very familiar slide for the, for the, the board. Uh, we're around 24 and a half million gallons a day in May. Uh, you can see the breakdown of the partners there. Uh, and then, uh, as you may know, we, we've been limited in some of our uh, flows through the plant due to the alum switch. Uh, we were able to get back to 30 MGD um, uh, for a period of time there in May. So we're, we're good to go, full, full plant operations on that front. Uh, obviously, all regulatory and uh, contract standards have been met. Um, and we are diverting uh, now, as Tim mentioned, under uh, since January 3rd, we're using our supplemental and purchase rights um, to supply the partners. Uh, and then on, Janu on June 3rd, not January 3rd, on June 3rd, uh, Woodland stopped feeding their ASR wells uh, as they're not able to use secondary rights to, to do so. Uh, as we've mentioned in the past as well, we are using alum uh, for our co coagulant. Uh, we were notified um, that we do have some supply chain issues potentially. Uh, as of right now, um, I think uh, my last conversation with, uh, with Brian, with Jacobs, we were able to procure another load. So we're, we're good on supplies for now. Uh, we do have ferric chloride still as a backup as, as needed. Um, so no changes at the plant. Um, uh, primarily what that means is, as you see on the first bullet, is we, we'd have increased backwashes uh, without the coagulant to help remove the sediment. Uh, and that would mean we'd have some additional water losses at the plant through the processes. Right now we average around 1% loss uh, or a little less. Um, and that, that would go up a little bit if we were to um, not have as, as uh, efficient of coagulant as we do now. Um, same thing with orthophosphate. We, we have not had issues to this point, um, but due to uh, some limited supply potentially um, from overseas, um, that could become a challenge as well. We'll keep you updated. Uh, and then um, Jacobs uh, continues to look at 24 seven uh, remote monitoring, not 24 seven, but remote monitoring instead of 24 seven plant operation. Um, and we're working with DDW to permit that appropriately and uh, right now, they're just testing the, the tech, uh, technical gear to enable them to um, provide us uh, with a confident manner that they can, they can operate it remotely uh, and respond if they need to. Uh, and then, as with many uh, agencies across the state, uh, they do have some staff, uh, staff openings that they're attempting to fill. Uh, they do have two operators and one mechanic of it, uh, open uh, at this point, and they are actively recruiting. Uh, it does not lead does not lead to any operational challenges from a staffing perspective, um, but it does mean they're on some alternative schedules to make sure that they can comply with the operational requirements uh, that we require. And with that, we'll take any questions or move on. <laughs> Thank you, Stan. Thank you, Tim. Any que last questions for Tim or for Stan? Okay, doesn't sound like it. Thank you both uh, for that report. Uh, we're gonna move on to a very important item number six, the budget for 22-23. And who's gonna carry that? Is that gonna be Tim? Uh, yeah, yeah, I will, I will handle this one. Yeah, so there's not a, not a whole lot of changes since the budget as we presented it back in April. Um, again, we, we do have real two main budget categories, operation and maintenance, which is really all the cost related to operating and maintaining our facilities, and then our, our debt and reserve payments. Uh, next slide, please. So overall, a total budget, oh, I gotta move, I gotta move my screen over a little bit, sorry. Um, okay, overall total budget for this year, um, the bottom line summary is just over 20 point, or just under 20.4 million dollars. Of that, about 9.7 million is operation and maintenance, and then 10.6 million or so is, is debt service. Um, of the op operation and maintenance costs, about 800 and, or 8.3 million, almost 8.4, is direct operation and maintenance costs. And then we have our various oversight, permit supply, administration, and then, uh, of course, our contingency after that. Uh, it, going into the categories a little bit, of our $9.7 million proposed operation budget, but 8.36 million is, is direct operation maintenance, which are which the biggest cost items in that really are the fixed and variable costs 
uh, with the operation of our regional facilities, our, in, our intake and our water treatment plant at 4.6 million. Uh, and then the next largest is the electricity and pasture chemical costs. I think, as I mentioned in April, electricity increased for us 15.7% this year. And the expectation is it will probably go up another 10% next year. And then uh, pass-through chemical cost, it was a bit trickier. Uh, if I remember, remember correctly, we increased it by 20% over last year. Um, we're no longer able to get a, a firm price for chemicals for a year ahead like we, we have always have been able to, as we have been able to in the past. Um, currently, due, just due to the market and supply chain issues, we can only get a guarantee of a price for the next quarter. So we had to kind of take a little bit of a guess as to what we think they may go the rest of the year. So we put in 20%. It seems to be what's in line with what other agencies are doing and, and where the suppliers think the market's going to go. Um, but that's kind of become a little bit unstable for us. Um, the other items really just are usual expenses of doing business, permitting fees, um, other expenses, uh, water rights fees, reporting requirements, uh, some investigative, uh, or actually some money for water purchase. That's um, some money for buying water in winter months. And then uh, the 0.2 million for joint intake erosion control, that's the agency's portion of the project to uh, address erosion at the intake. Uh, next slide, please. And, and the next category we have is O&M oversight. Since we do have contract operations, we do need to have some oversight of that contract. Um, in, in the short, short description is really just basically maintaining the contract, make sure that Jacobs is fulfilling all the contract uh, requirements. Um, as well as some program and technical support to the agency and its partners. And then um, also the intake and water, water treatment plant electric billing allocations. We do, have, we do have to split the bill every month. The uh, intake is a bit more complicated because we, we do have WAPA power, which does include some back charges. And then we do split that bill with RD2035. So we usually have to go back. And a portion of each bill really relates to something from two or three months prior. So we have to go back and look at the earlier bill and figure out who's portion of the bill that is. So that actually is a cost item for us in our budget. Uh, the next category is permits and water supply. Uh, that's really our, our team's assistance with water rights support and supplementary, supplementary water purchase investigations. Uh, we now have to do what the state calls an annual water supply and demand assessment. That's a new state regulation that we have to comply with as do the cities. Um, basically, we have to certify to the state uh, what our supply and demand is and do we have enough water, uh, which for the agency is a bit awkward because the agency doesn't really have demand. We have we have partners that we supply water with and our supply is what we have. So it's kind of a bit awkward for us. We had to try to figure out how do we feel it best for us, but that's a new new requirement we have every year going forward. Uh, next item is agency administration, just under $600,000. So that includes our agency secretary, uh, myself and Stan. It includes uh, treasurer and accounting services, legal counsel, uh, insurance. About half that budget is insurance these days. That has gone up about 25%, I think, each year of the past few years. Uh, so that's now becoming a uh, real significant cost for us. And then other miscellaneous, uh, most of that is um, organizational memberships. We have about three organizational memberships we maintain. And then also public outreach. That item is uh, we are going to update our website this year. We, we have not updated the website since we started operations in 2016. So I guess in the tech world, it's, it's ancient. We need to update it now. So there's, there's a little bit of budget for that. And then the operation contingency, that is uh, basically just a percentage of the operations budget that we maintain just in case something were to go wrong throughout the year. Uh, next slide, please. So the debt and reserve payment, this is the 10.6 million. This is the same every year. Uh, we are obligated for these payments for the duration of the loans. Uh, one that's coming up relatively soon as Woodland Reserve payment, that's a 10 year payment. Uh, so I think we're in year six now, maybe seven. So a few more years and that one can drop off. Um, but the other two will be, will be several more years yet. Uh, next slide, please. And talk a little bit about how, the, how this budget compares with last year's budget and where we are um, throughout the year. So on the left is the different major categories that we have. Uh, the next column with, with dollars in it, that's the 21, 22, the current fiscal year approved budget. Uh, the next column is where, we're, where we are projected to end at the end of the <coughs> end of June. And then the third column is proposed budget. The last column is the difference between proposed budget and the current approved budget. Uh, I think the projected expenditure is right now showing 17.7 million total. I think we'll actually end up probably a little bit higher than that. Uh, just because term 91 didn't start until June, 
which means that essentially we had unrestricted water use throughout the month of May. So we ran the plant, as Dan mentioned, over 24 MGD. We were, we were not planning on doing that in May this year, but turns out we were able to. So we will have a bit higher um, expenditure than that, I think. Um, so comparing the two years together, uh, operation and maintenance budget is higher by about a million dollars. The rest of the categories are all essentially flat. And then uh, operation contingency is about $49,000 higher. And that's because it's a percentage of the O&M cost. So the net difference in our budget between the proposed budget and last year is an increase of just over a million dollars from last year. And I can, the next couple of slides walk through why basically. Um, so in the O&M cost comparison, um, the operation maintenance budget is $990,000 higher in the proposed budget, um, primarily due to a couple of factors. One of them being high risk inflows. We, we assume for budgeting purposes, basically that we'll get roughly average flows. We don't necessarily assume that we're in a, a severe drought because droughts can't end. Um, but the other bigger cost that we do know is higher electricity and higher chemical costs. We are for the first time using repair and replacement costs. As Dan mentioned, that's for the meter at the, at the intake. And then um, some higher supplemental water purchase costs because we, I don't think we'll be able to buy water from West Sacramento this year. Uh, they, they have their own struggles this year. Um, so it's, it's gonna be, I think a higher cost than what we've seen the first couple of years of buying water for November. The OM oversight budget is a little bit lower. Um, primarily due to not doing a third party inspection this year and some minor decreases in other line items. Next slide, please. Permits and water supply budget is essentially flat. Uh, a little bit increase for water right support and supplementar, what, supplemental water purchase investigations. Uh, increase in those are, are offset by reduced cost for water supply and alternatives evaluation. And the annual water supply demand assessment, um, we put in a not a high budget, but without knowing what the regulations are going to be, we put in something without appropriate. Turns out because it doesn't really fit for us, we just kind of put in the totals at the end. Um, we, we spent less on that than we thought we would have to. Uh, so that carries over into the next budget year. Agency administration costs are, are roughly flat. Uh, most of our admin costs went down a little bit, um, but with the increase in insurance costs, it basically offset that one. Um, next. Uh, overall contingency budget, which is, as I said, 5% uh, of the O&M budget is increased simply due to the O&M budget being a bit higher. Uh, debt and reserve payments are not changed. Uh, next slide, please. So overall, how this, how this relates to the partners uh, for the city of Woodland, uh, the, the Woodland's percentage of the budget is 11.1 million. City of Davis, uh, just under 7.8 million. UC Davis, 510,000. Uh, already 2035, 383,000. R&R fund, which is a budget category that we carry for the, for the meter replacement, that's 130,000 with a total revenue needed of 19.9 million. Uh, this does not include the contingency because we simply roll it over year to year. We have never used our contingency yet. Uh, so instead of collecting that from the partners and then re returning it the next year, we just don't, we just roll it over year, every year and don't collect it anymore. So with that, I, um, I can take any questions on the budget, and there's really two action items that come out of this. One of them is a consideration of adoption of the fiscal year 23 budget. And then there's two consultant task orders, one of them for West Yost as the agency's engineer, and the other one for ESA as the uh, environmental consultant for secret compliance for water purchase agreements. Thank All right, let's open it up for discussion. Does any uh, board member have any comment for Tim or question? I have my hand up for a question. Okay, I see it. Um, Tim, can you tell us what the state bill is, Senate bill or assembly bill that um, has us reporting on our water supply? Uh, Do you recall? There, there's several of them. The one that comes to mind immediately is 552. Okay. Yeah, Senate bill 552. Yeah, okay. I think that's the most recent one. There's also 555, but that one might be water loss audit. Okay, I was just wondering. You you mentioned specifically when you were um, talking about our needs to report on our supply and use to the state um, that it was a fairly new regulation. I was wondering if it was, if it was five fifty two. Um, the county is um, Dana and OES with the county is also looking at what they need to do for reporting. So it might be good for us. UC Davis is actually having conversations with her since we report as our own 
community water supplier, small water supplier, um, community water system, sorry. Um, we're trying to figure out exactly what all we need to do under that too. So it might be good if there's a little bit of, you know, coordination behind the scenes of like, who's reporting what to whom. Um, just, a, just an observation. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, they, they, it seems these days that there's there's quite a form, quite a few more rules coming out and new reporting that we have to do where it's almost like we have to report every drop of water. So yeah, the more collaboration we can do to see how we can streamline things, the, the better. Okay. Thanks, Camille, for that. Anybody else have a question or comment? Doesn't sound like it. Uh, Michelle, do we have any public uh, comment on this item? No public comment. All right, uh, back to the board uh, for consideration of the request to approve the budget. Uh, this Ballard. is Bill. I'll go ahead and move it. Ballard will Bill second. Thank you. Stallard <clears throat> moves it. Michelle? Yes, uh, Chair Landsberg. Aye. Vice Chair Chapman. Aye. Director Stallard. Aye. Director Arnold. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Tim. Uh, that takes us to item number seven, selection of uh, chair and vice chair for 22-23. Uh, this is the annual drawing of the straws. And mm -hmm. uh, I'll start off, but I'm going to move uh, Josh Chapman as the uh, Chair for 2223. I'll second that. I'll third that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, That's very nice of you all. <laughs> <laughs> you accept, Josh? <laughs> Absolutely. And, uh, the great group of folks. Council, would you, we need a public comment or a vote on this. You do need a vote. Uh, you need to vote on it, yes. All right. So Michelle, the uh, the motion is to approve Josh Chapman as the uh, chair for 22-23. Um, Director Arnold. Aye. Director Stallard. Aye. Chair Landsberg. Aye. Vice Chair Chapman, how do you feel about that? <laughs> Aye. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. The next item under number eight, seven is the selection of the vice chair for 22-23. I'll, I'll nominate Tom. Nomination of Tom Steller for the vice chair by Will Arnold. Is there a second? I'll second Chapman. Okay, second by Chapman. Michelle? Director, uh, Vice Chair Chapman. Aye. Chair Landsberg. Aye. Director Arnold. Aye. And Director Stallard. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That takes us to, thank you for that. Uh, that takes us to item number eight, summary of third party inspection report concerning water treatment plan operations and maintenance. I'll, I'll take this, uh, Mr. Chair. So it should be real quick. Um, we did have, as, as was mentioned, we actually removed it from the budget for this year, but we did conduct a third party uh, inspection uh, as per contract every five years. Uh, we look to do that. We engage with a consultant. Um, this was prior slash during the pandemic, so it was a bit of a challenge to get it squared away, but we eventually did. Um, included in that review per the service agreement was uh, inspection of the infrastructure, laboratory procedures, um, chemical areas, and then O&M and, &M and uh, repair, uh, repair and replacement records. Um, those were just the categories that are called out in the, in the service contract. Uh, and then I just wanted to let you know some of the findings. Uh, in general, um, the, the consultants uh, definitely felt that Jacobs was, was performing well. Um, as with any third-party inspection, whether it be regulatory or otherwise, uh, there were some findings related to um, related to process improvements and and some changes that we could make. Um, some of the findings related to CMMS, so our computer uh, computerized maintenance management system, um, which is our record keeping, if you will. 
they found that some of those preventive maintenance records were, were not uh, being entered into the system as they should be. Um, and uh, we did we did chat. I did chat with um, Brian with Jacobs, and and that has been uh, identified and corrected. Um, maintenance identified some uh, pre again preventive maintenance work at um, preventive maintenance work to complete. Um, so we've we've identified those areas that were uh, deficient, uh, and, and the team there, Jake, working on. <clears throat> and then operations. A lot of the operations. Uh, recommendations focused on enhancements of our current process so there's there's no challenges uh, with what jacobs does today but there's there's always improvements or efficiencies that can be looked at um and um so you know we've we've talked about those and some of those we certainly will look to implement some of those uh from a, a work um workforce and um just amount of resources necessary to implement uh, they may not be something that that we as a, a staff would would look to do because uh, it doesn't necessarily uh, enhance or uh, provide that efficiency that maybe the expenditure would, would be worth. Uh, and then also we looked at network and communications as part of this as well. Uh, they certainly felt that Jacobs uh, network and computer systems and um, uh, the cybersecurity were certainly um, pretty, pretty robust. So that was good to know as well. Uh, and then actions related to that, obviously, we re I reviewed the report with Jacobs. Uh, we definitely assessed and implemented some additional CMMS uh, controls and record keeping. And then we plan, obviously, to continue the discussion on those process monitoring enhancements uh, and see what makes sense to implement and, and move forward with. Uh, given the staffing challenges that we're all experiencing, some of those may be uh, down the road that we'll look to those um, but certainly we'll uh, we'll see what makes sense for the for the agency to uh, enact um, and then again we'll we'll continue to do uh, you know that the idea is this third party inspection is about every five years um, but that doesn't mean that we don't talk regularly with with Jacobs and with the team there and and look to uh, do some additional internal reviews just to ensure that some of these recommendations are being followed and that and that they're uh, they're continuing to be implemented as we move forward, so that uh, the idea not not at our ten year inspection we don't uh, we don't come up to the same issues. So that's that's the goal, uh, and that's about it. I'd be happy to take any questions. I see a hand up by Commissioner or Board Member Stoller. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chair. Appreciate the good report. What I, I think are we coming up now on six years of operation this June? Seven. Well, we've completed six years of operation, we're starting our seventh year. Yeah, we're into our seventh now. Wow. Uh, the reason I'm asking the question is, are we still a state-of-the-art operation? Yeah. I would I would suggest we are, absolutely. Um, so I think everything's in place. We were we were that to begin with. And and the the you know, based on this report, the the plan is being well maintained. Uh, and the processes are still performing uh, at an optimal level. So absolutely. We had once also talked about the possibility of putting a solar array in to furnish our electric needs. I suppose WAPA makes it less cost effective to go solar. Is that accurate? It, it might be. I mean, that's part of the overall conversation that, that uh, Tim mentioned earlier is we are, we're, we're actually talking both with WAPA, as he mentioned, and then we are having some conversations around solar, but it's that's going to have to be an assessment we perform now if if WAPA is interested in providing additional power um you know the, the capital cost for bringing in solar um that'll be something we'll have to look at um and then bring back to the board yeah thank you i'm still interested in it so look forward to hearing further about that sure. that's all i have mr chair thank you mr Stowler. any other questions or comments for stan on this item Stan, I have a question. Uh, does this inspection include like safety measures? I, I know that uh, other agencies across the United States are worried about fringe uh, fringe groups, you know, messing with water supplies, electric supplies. Does that inspection include a safety? So there's there's, there's it, it it touched on cybersecurity. Um, the focus wasn't necessarily directly on cybersecurity and physical improvements from that safety perspective. Um, it touches on them, which is you know part of the reason we didn't share the report, frankly, um, and put it in the public uh, view. 
<clears throat> but it, it didn't deal directly with cybersecurity as a full report. Um, but I will say is, as I mentioned, the networking systems and our communications that, that uh, and the, the protocols that Jacobs provides and, and employs are state of the art, our um, current practice. So uh, we definitely feel we're, we're, um, we're protected as much as we can be on that front. And, right. and we, did do, we did do a deep dive a year ago Right. The uh, America Water Infrastructure Act, where I, I, I forget if it was EPA or Homeland Security, but we had to do a deep dive into any any risk to our facilities. Yeah, and that included definitely included cybersecurity as well as physical um, physical potentials as well. Great. Thank you for that. Uh, Michelle, is there any public comment on item number eight? There is no public comment on item number eight, All right. Chair. Thank you. If there are no further questions or comments, we'll close item number eight and move to number nine. The consider the 22-23 contract task orders with our consultants. And uh, who's going to carry that one? Mr. Okay. Chair, I move immediate approval of both contracts with the consultants, if you're willing to accept that. So we better check on the, with any public comment first. I'll second it just for the good of the order. <laughs> Michelle, any public comment? No public comment on item number nine. Any uh, board member have discussion or comment on this? If not, we have a motion by Stallard, seconded by, I think, Arnold. Michelle? Uh, Chair Landsberg? Aye. Vice Chair Chapman? Aye. Director Stallard? Aye. Director Arnold? Aye. So Lindsay, you hung around for like the quickest one we had all day. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> all right, you're welcome. Happy customers. <laughs> <laughs> that closes out number nine. It takes us to the long range board calendar. Yeah, there's not, not much coming up. Our next, our next regularly scheduled board meeting is September 21st. Um, and I think the one we want, aren't we hosting the Mandela folks soon, Stan? I think that's coming up at some point also. I don't see it. It's not on our calendar, but that's something we should probably mention that we're doing. No, I, I think I, I think so. I don't recall if we actually, I know they did, uh, honestly, they did the uh, wastewater plant here in Davis. I can't recall if they had set up and, and were scheduled to come into the water plant again, but that's for the board. That's uh, uh, with UCD, there's a Mandela Fellowship, uh, Mandela Fellowship that, uh, um, so you have individuals from other countries that come in and they, they tour and talk about a bunch of different um, infrastructure and other activities that, that take place around the, the area. And we've hosted them for a number of years. We've hosted them out at the uh, water plant um, to uh, have a tour and then talk about how we procured, how the plant got built, um, the financing and how the partners came together. And so that's been really good. And, I don't recall if that was coming up uh, this year, Tim, or not. If we uh, if we actually scheduled that, yeah, I'll look back and see if it, see if it's on our calendar. Yeah, but it's it's good. It's <laughs> nothing for the board as far as from a meeting perspective, but it's good information yeah. for the board to have. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that. So it looks like our next board meeting is going to be September fifteenth at three o'clock at the Woodlands um, City, oh, yeah. uh, City Hall Chambers. So uh, is there any public comment on number 10, Michelle? No public comment on number 10. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Stellar, your hand's still raised. Uh, is that just by accident or do you have a comment? Your neglect, Mr. Chair. Thank you. <laughs> now you have two of them. <laughs> that takes us to item number 11. Uh, board member comments. Any uh, board member have a comment to make today? I do. I'm going to say thank you for your service and welcome to our new chair and vice chair. Yeah, I concur. Thank you, thank you very much, everyone. And uh, if that if nothing else, that's going to take us to item number 12, adjournment to our next regular board meeting, September 15th. Everyone have a great evening. Oh, I see a hand up again by Stallard. Mm -hmm. Nope. Is that the thumbs up? <laughs> <laughs> so, Congratulations. And have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you, Thanks everybody. All. Have a great night. Cheers. All right. Thank All right. you. Thanks. Take care. Bye-bye.